This video is all about a beginner's overview of Cricut Design Space. And before we get started, I just want to say that if you would like to find any free SVG cut files, feel free to head over to my blog, abbykirstencollections.com, and you can sign up for our email list and you'll get a bunch of great ones to try out. I also want to say that I have a brand new course, The Cutting Edge Crafters, which is being launched in May of 2019, and the link for that is below this video. So if you want to become a Cricut master and learn how to design your own SVG cut files, be sure to check that out as well. In this lesson, I just want to give you a overview of the design space interface. There's um, a lot of different little things to learn and to practice and to do in here, but I want to just introduce you to it in general in an overview before we start diving into the specific tools and um, buttons and how everything works here. Um, just so you don't feel like a fish out of water when I say let's go over here and click this or click that. So. Um, if you're not already, go ahead and go to design.cricut.com and open up a new project. Um, this is, uh, already went over this in the um, lesson where we install Design Space. So go ahead and just get to a new canvas here. And we're just going to start over here. And at the top over here, you'll see a little button that says New. If at any point in time you want to start a new project and get a fresh canvas like we're looking at here, you just want to click this New button over here. When you do that, it's going to um, likely prompt you, if you've already started a project, to save the project or to replace it if you don't want to save it. Um, but just know that you want, if you want to start a new project, that's the button to do it. The button underneath it here is the Templates button. And this is something that, honestly, I rarely use, um, but it is dependent upon every person, and we will cover what its function is. It's just um, for helping you layer um, your designs onto a project example. So for example, there's t-shirt templates in here, there's tote bag templates in here that will help you get a perspective of your design on a particular object. Um, so that can be helpful to some people depending on your project. The button below it is your projects button. Anytime you have saved a project, you'll be able to go back and find it in your saved um, projects over here, or you can also find it up at the top over here where it says my projects on the right hand top side. So um, anytime that you want to find something, that's where you're going to go to look for that. Below that we have images. Images is where you're going to go when you want to find an image within Cricut's database. Uh, we're going to go over that more in the next lessons, but um, for all the wonderful images that Cricut offers us, that's where we're going to go to find those. Below that we have text. Anytime you want to add text or work with fonts in any ways, that's where you're going to do that. Below that we have shapes, and shapes is just they give you basic, um, you know, geometric and pentagon shapes and circles and such like that. Your upload button here at the bottom is where you're going to learn how to upload your own SVG files and print and cut images and anything that is not provided for you via Cricut Images. Um, and you want to upload your own stuff from the web or things that you've designed that we're going to work on later. That's how you're going to do that with this upload button right here. Now, starting over here at the top, to get these to light up, right now they're grayed out because I don't have anything on my canvas. So to get these to light up, I'm just going to pull in a circle here from our Shapes button. So now I have some things up here that are happening because there is something on my canvas. So right over here you have your Undo and Redo button. Anytime you want to, you've made a mistake and you want to go back, whether you want to resize something or move something back into place, just click the Undo button and it will do that for you. Over here we have the line type. Now we're going to talk about different line types later on, but there's a cut line, a draw line, and a score line within Cricut Design Space. And what this basically means is when you have a cut line, that's what's going to be cut out with a blade on the machine. If you have a draw line, you're going to be drawing something with a pen. If you have a score line, you're going to be scoring it with a scoring wheel with the maker or with a scoring stylus with the Explore machine. So this is just to clarify when you want to select what type of cut, draw, or score, what type of thing you want to do, the Cricut machine to do for you. Right here we have whatever color 
it is we have on our screen. If you're wanting to play around with how a project might look when you actually cut it out uh, on a certain color vinyl or paper that you have, you may want to play around with the colors that you can input here on the canvas. And if you want to customize the colors, you can go to advanced and you can type in any color code that you might want to get that uh, particular visual of how your project is going to turn out if you're working with certain colors of materials. And when we go over here to fill, we have no fill and we have print. So this is just basically telling Design Space if we're going to be doing a print and cut image or we're going to have a uh, pattern fill here, which we will get to later on. Um, over here we have our deselect button. Anytime you want to unselect something or you want to select all, that's how you're going to do that. The other way that's really easy to do that, I almost never use this button because the simplest way to do it is just to click the object or drag and it will highlight it and click it for you or click off. So you can use the button up here if you want or you can just click on and off the shape on the canvas. When we come over here to the edit you have cut and copy and paste. This is basically just your control C, control V on a PC um, or Mac command V, command C, command V on a Mac, I believe it is. Um, but generally what I will do here is you can always do control C and then control V and it will paste. You can come up here and you can do cut, copy and paste if you want to, you can do copy, and you can do paste and it will paste another one or as another option there is a duplicate button right over here on the right hand side you can also hit duplicate and that is another way that you can duplicate or copy an item there's actually a lot of ways to do it so whichever way is quickest and easiest for you those are all the ways to do that um, over here we actually here, i'm going to undo this real quick I'm going to duplicate, actually, I'm going to duplicate this. Um, <clears throat> over here, we have the align button. And in order for some, that to be selected and to be uh, clicked on, you have to have at least two objects selected. And that's just where we're going to talk about how to align objects and distribute objects together later on. Um, <clears throat> Next we have the arrange button, and this is just simply if you want to bring an object on the canvas, either forwards, backwards. Um, so for example, this, one, uh, this circle here is in front of this circle here. If you're working with a design and you need to send something to the back, you're just going to click on that arrange button and you can hit send to the back, and now this circle is on top of this one. So when you're working with layers, that can be helpful if you're trying to arrange a design in a particular way. Um, next to that, we have the flip button, and this is just how you would flip a design horizontally or vertically. So if you wanted to change which direction something is going, that's how you're going to do that. You're going to flip it either direction. And these are obviously uh, circles that are very perpendicular to each other, so you can't really tell that I'm flipping them when I click that button. But they're being flipped um, 180 degrees each direction, whether it be horizontally or vert vertically. Um, right here, we have the size. At any point in time, this will tell you the size of the object on your screen. You will always also see the size right here on the object on the X and Y axis or on the vertical and horizontal axis. So you will see the numbers written in inches at any point in time right here. It's also going to show you right here if your shape is locked with the little locked button. The lock button for your design is right down here at the left hand side of your shape. Any shape that you're going to upload, any image, these points are all going to be the same. You're going to have a lock button right here and if you click this lock button it will unlock. It will also show that it has unlocked here at the top and you will be able to then stretch and manipulate this shape. So if I wanted to I could pull this down like this and make it more oblong or stretch it out this way. Whenever I am happy with a shape and I am done with that, you're just going to click the lock button again, and then that way it can be scaled, but the shape will not change. Um, and it will update your width and height um, inches as you do that here, and also reflect them right here on the axes as well. So that is what that is for. If at any point in time you're wanting to be very particular with your dimensions and you're sitting here dragging this um, 
arrow at the corner to expand or to shrink an image and you're trying to get an exact um, decimal of a number, the easiest way to do that is just to type it in right here or you can even use the little arrow buttons and it will move up one point at a time. So that can be helpful if you're trying to be very precise with measurements. Over here we have our rotate button and this is just a simple and quick button if you want to rotate something um, and it will move one degree at a time for you. I'm again using a circle so even though it's doing it it's just rotating a perpendicular circle there. Um, but if you're trying to rotate an object and you're trying to do it very precisely and very minimally, that's a great way to do that only one point at a time. Another way to rotate an object is right here with your rotate button, right at the very top um, right hand side of any shape, you will always see a rotate button. So you can always turn any shape around any direction by holding and dragging that rotate button and then when you let go, it will adjust um, all the functions for you. So if I move the shape like here, it will adjust these points again so that they are all in their normal spaces. If you're trying to be very precise with your rotations, then just click one point at a time so you can get very detailed if you need to. Okay, our last piece over here on the top bar is the more button and you'll click the arrow button for that. And all this is is just giving you one more a tool to be very precise with your positions on a screen. Um, I've owned a lot of crickets and I personally have never really found a need for this very often, um, but if you're wanting to place this very specifically on, a, on your canvas and then your paper or vinyl or whatever material on a mat, you may want to position this very specifically on the screen. So that's all that for is moving the actual item on the screen by decimals. <clears throat> all right. Okay, next we have the right side of the design space screen over here. And this is where you're probably gonna find yourself working the most often. You, anytime you have a image in here, you will see that it is appearing right over here in layers. Whichever layer is the top layer, if I were to layer these together, you see that this circle here is over this circle. That will always be the one that's at the top. So it works sequentially in order. And now at, at any point in time, if you want to hide an image but not delete it from the screen, you can see this little I button right over here. You select whatever image you want to hide and you would click that I button. And it is now removed from the canvas and will not cut out. If you were to go and cut this circle over here right now, you will not cut two circles, you will only cut one. But it is still present so that when you want to bring it back, it is now still there. You don't have to delete and then you know reinsert the item and have to readjust it and everything. So you can just hide and then view it when you want to. <clears throat> Up at the top here, um, this is your layers panel, as I said, up at the top, you have a group, ungroup, duplicate, and delete button. So in order to get our group and ungroup buttons to even highlight so that they are usable, you have to have at least two objects selected. So I'm gonna select these two circles here. And if I wanted to group these together, you would just click the group button. And all that's ultimately doing is just making it so that it is one um, layer within a group and it is adjustable together so that you can move both at the same time and do everything in sync in that one group. Whenever you wanna ungroup it, just hit the ungroup button right next to it. Oftentimes when you import your own SVGs, your items will automatically be imported, imported as a group. So you will always just need to select the item and then click that ungroup button to be able to move the layers around if you need to. The next button over here is the duplicate button, which I already discussed a moment ago, and that's just to du duplicate any item. You can click that or do um, copy and paste. And then the delete button over here, anytime you wanna actually delete an item, you can also just delete an item by clicking the delete button um, or the backspace button on your uh, desktop, on your um, keypad. Yeah, that's what it's called, keypad. <laughs> so anytime you want to delete an item, you can also use your keypad with the delete button and the backspace button as well as this button right up here. So uh, moving on, 
we have the color sync over um, on this side right now when we have layers selected. We are in the layers panel. When we want to move to that, you want to click the color sync button. So if we want to move to color sync, we got to click on that. It's telling you here this panel just allows you to sync colors to use fewer materials. You can change an object's color and drag and drop that object into a layer of the desired color. Right now, I only have one color on this screen. So it is just showing me one color sync layer here because I don't have more than one color. But if you're wanting to uh, consolidate your colors to use fewer materials and you want to do that real um, easily, there are a few other ways you can do this, but the color sync panel, that's what that's there for. So to, use, to show you an example of this, I'm going to select one of my circles and I'm going to come over here to the colors button that we discussed earlier and I'm going to change it to just this blue. You will now see that it's registering that I have two colors here in Design Space. So if I were to import a couple different images, but I want to cut these images out on the same paper and I don't want Cricut to separate them when I go to the cut screen because they are different colors, I'm going to just grab the blue one, for example, and drag it next to the gray circle and it's going to automatically sync the colors so that when I go to the cut screen, the make it button up here, it's going to cut them out on the same um, mat. It's not going to separate them by color. So that's uh, what that color sync panel is for there. Okay, next we're going to go back to our layers panel here. And um, I'm going to select both these circles again. And you will see down at the bottom of this layers panel that we have a slice and a weld, an attached, a flatten, and a contour button. The contour button is hidden by my pause button for my screen recording right now, but that's what that is right there is your contour button. You'll be able to see that on your screen. Um, I just want you to know where these tools are right now. They're right down here at the bottom of the layers panel. I'm not going to go into everything that these do right now because I'm going to have specific short lessons on those. But when I reference we need to work with a slice, weld, or attach button, I just want you to know that those are down here and you will have to have objects selected in order for them to be uh, usable, those buttons to be usable and lit up there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, anytime you want to save a project, you would just click the Save button right up here at the top, and then it will be able to be found in your projects over um, there in your saved uh, projects, and that's the Cricut Cloud. So um, it's saved there, and you can access it on any device. If you're using a different device later on, like your iPad or something, you can still access your project that because it's in the cloud. This green button over here is your make it button. So anytime we're going to go to the cut screen, that's going to be what you're going to click. And it would always tell you that it's sorting it by color and it will present you with the cut screen. I'm not going to go any more into that right now because we're going to get more into that with individual lessons. If you want to exit the cut screen at any time, you'll just click the cancel button at the bottom. So that is a basic introduction to Design Space. Oh, and I want to mention too that if at any point in time you want to zoom in and out, you'll have a um, zoom in and out button right down here at the bottom. You can just hit the minus button to zoom all the way out, or you can hit the plus button to zoom all the way in. So I think I covered pretty much everything there, and we're going to go into each of these individual tools and use them as we use our practice lessons. So you now have a basic overview of Design Space. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.